Okay, so in the last video, I kind of talked about the intuition behind convergence and gave some insight into why it's a tricky concept. And now we will actually define completely unambiguously, rigorously, what it means for a sequence to converge. This is like one of the most important definitions in the whole class. It's like the definition to end all definitions. Okay, so it's, I, I implore you to pay very close attention to this definition and think about it a lot and uh, don't ne never let it go. Okay, it's very important. So um, I'm gonna just state it now. Uh, so definition, uh, we say a sequence SN converges to, well, let me see if I'm stating this. Okay, sure. Converges to a real number S if, so for, actually, hold on. Let me change color here. Um, let's say this for any or for each, let's say for each epsilon. So this funny like backwards three looking thing is an epsilon for each epsilon greater than zero. There exists a number n such that for each n greater than n, oops, hold on funny looking at. Uh, we have the following absolute value of SN minus S is less than epsilon. Okay, so this is all symbols. Uh, and so it's a little bit hard to parse at first, probably. But what I want to do, so the reason I wrote these things in different colors is because, well, you'll kind of see, but um, first of all, notice these for each, there exists for each, okay? Although, so the book states it slightly differently. It's not actually different in what it means, but um, I'm gonna state it this way just because it's, uh, I think, well, the book uses implies and that's kind of like, a, um, so this last bit, you could rephrase as n greater than n implies Sn minus S is less than epsilon. It's the same thing, but um, basically I want to make sure you're aware that um, th th these things for any of you who know anything about logic, these things for each or for all more commonly known as for all, there's for all, there exists for all. Those are called quantifiers and quantifiers are one of the fundamental building blocks of logical statements. And basically what we have here is three quantifiers. Okay. Three quantifiers in a row. There's for each, there exists then for each again. And the order is critical. You cannot rewrite this in a different order, okay? You have to pay very close attention to the order because changing up the order will change the meaning of the statement. And you'll see more why that's true when we get into like how you prove stuff converges and stuff like that. But uh, I, I think um, I would say just memorize this. Okay, this definition, if there's any definition in the class worth memorizing, this is definitely one of them, okay? Um, and don't mess up the order of these things. It's really important. So uh, 
let's see. Um, let's look at an example. Uh, okay, I'm gonna actually erase this. I'm just gonna go back to my sort of toy example from before, uh, or one of or a, a, a toy example. So, so what we said in the last video was that Sn equals one over N converges to zero, right? So let's see how that actually works in this case. So let me actually draw, like just sketch a little graph of it first. So we have um, something like that, something like that. Okay, so here's our little graph. Now, um, so in this case, right, the number s is the zero, zero, the number zero is playing the role of s, right? Uh, S is supposed to be the limit up here in the definition. So let's kind of go through this and see why this is true for a few, in a few examples for Sn equals one over N. So let's imagine epsilon is just one, right? So what this is saying is like, okay, for any epsilon we can pick, there better be some number capital N, right? That has this property. So Let's think about the number capital N, right? Let's imagine, let's, in this case, it's really easy. So I'll just tell you, we can take capital N equals one or zero even, or, or anything, actually any number will work. Um, so, or a million. Okay, it doesn't matter um, because now let, let's imagine we picked capital N equals one. So now let's check if that actually works, right? Not every capital N will always work. Some, some of them are bad. So all we need to know is that for each little n bigger than capital N, this is true, right? So say little n is bigger than capital N, which we picked to be one in this case. Then absolute value of Sn minus zero is just one over n and that's clearly well okay actually okay i wasn't super careful so this says a strict inequality you could actually probably replace this with a weak inequality and it's not too bad okay let's take this to be two sorry okay i kind of that was a little bit clumsy but um hold on so let's just, uh, dang it. Let's say capital N is two. Or it could be three. Okay, so one actually doesn't work technically just because of the inequality, but that's, it doesn't really matter. Um, but so then, okay, so this is clearly less than one if N is bigger, bigger than two. Or, or well, okay, big, yeah, actually even bigger than one. Oh, actually one did work, okay. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, right. So this could have been one, just don't just forget about it. It doesn't matter, I'm just being silly. Uh, okay, so, so that's uh, one example. Uh, let's, but the thing is, this is supposed to be true for any epsilon, right? It says for each epsilon, you can find some capital N, right? So let's, uh, let's go back. Let's imagine we picked a more challenging epsilon, right? So let's, I'm just going to erase this. Oops. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let me redraw that axis. Oh, that was strange. Okay. Um, right, so now let's say epsilon is like one tenth. Okay, 
or actually, hold on. Let's do a little bit. Let's say epsilon is like one third. Whoa. So let's say epsilon is one third. Then um, I'm going to actually draw this in the picture here. So one third theoretically intersects right here. So this is epsilon. OK. That's one third. So the point is, we just need to pick capital N so that beyond the point capital N, so let's say, you know, capital N we pick to be somewhere over here. It could even, we could even pick capital N to equal three. Capital N doesn't have to be an integer, by the way. Um, then, oh my God. Um, these things are very finicky. So, uh, right, so we could pick capital N, so we can take capital N equals three, for example, because then for little n bigger than capital N, right, pictorially you can just see that they all stay below, here, I can sort of, oh, whoa, okay, they all stay below, right, so this is epsilon, the idea is for Sn minus S to be less than epsilon is really, in this picture, that just means that the dots are below the line representing epsilon, right? So as long as a dot is below this line, then the absolute value of that minus zero is less than epsilon. So what we really just want to find is basically some cutoff here, right? So that all the dots beyond that point stay between this line and this one, okay? So that's, this picture is like a really common way of visualizing, you know, how the definition of convergence works, you know, pictorially when you graph a sequence like you can kind of see uh, what you're aiming for. So basically epsilon is kind of this like sliding bar that you need to keep stay, you want to find a place where the sequence basically stays below that bar, at least in this example. That's what it means for the sequence to converge. And you can kind of see that no matter how low we move the bar, obviously it can't actually reach zero, but if we put the bar really, really low, all we have to do is move this cutoff really, really far out and then the rest of the sequence will stay below the bar. That's actually all this definition is getting at. Um, so sorry for the little bit of uh, technical difficulties, but um, yeah, that's it for the uh, definition of convergence.